Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I'm working on a Honda mower. This thing was thrown out on the side of the road, and I stopped and picked it up. It's a uh, HRX. They're pretty nice mowers. In fact, this is what I use uh, for my own yard. And um, I gave it a pull. The compression seemed a little light, so I don't know. We'll have to go through this thing and see what we find. So here it is, HRX 217, has the plastic deck, that won't rust out. Uh, fuel shut off looks to be broken here, still works but it, uh, the bracket's broken. Got some uh, uh, DIY home repair here with some tape, not sure what that is. And the cool thing about this mower is you could switch it from mulching the bagging up here with this green handle. And they do mulch quite well. Got heavy oil on there. I don't think it's leaking oil. I just think this thing has high hours. And it's never really been taken care of. Also, uh, one of the tires over here, that tire, we need a new one. So, uh... We'll check this thing out, see what we got. Start out, we're gonna remove the air cover. This looks like this has never been changed. Yeah, so that's good. That thing's so packed up that that actually could be a problem, especially in that area. But, actually looks kinda clean in there. So, uh, we'll see if this thing has spark. That's broken. Spark and compression. Looks like the choke's on. Let's see if this moves. Well, that's good. Choke's off. Put some juice in there. We'll choke it. And we'll give it a pull and see what we get. Oh man, that, that is not too promising. <laughs> Looks like we've got to work on the recoil a little bit. There, fellas. Think that sticky recoil is enough to make someone throw this thing out? Maybe. Well, the engine's a runner. Next thing I want to check is just that the uh, self propel works. So I'm going to try and start it one more time quickly. And I'll pull the handle and we'll see if the wheels. Turn off that choke. I did check the oil. There was there was some oil in it. Alright, so gonna try and start this and then I'll I'll pull the uh, the drive. Get a good pull. I'm trying to get the rope back in. All right.
Alright, self propel works. So I just want to check that the crank isn't bent. I'll unplug the spark plug here. I think it's all right. Yeah, looks good. I'm gonna start out with the recoil here. It should be three 10 mils. The rope looks new. So, we're going to blow this out. We'll just try and oil this at first and see what that does. Fifty fifty acetone ATF. Spring's looking a little weak, so we're going to have to actually fix this. So the easiest way to fix this is to tighten the spring without taking everything apart. So I'm going to start by getting the rope kind of out of here. So we'll pull the rope all the way out. And then I'll put a screwdriver through here. And what I'm going to do is burn an opening in here. And I'm pulling the rope out because I don't want to hit it when I try and burn this thing. We're going to make a little loop like a chainsaw. So this is what we're going to use. A little bolt. So I got a torch here. We're going to heat this up. Say we're hot enough here, so we're going to reach in here and try and melt through a little bit, make a little dimple on the top side of this. I like using a, a bolt, you can actually use the threads to file a little bit. I don't know how well you can see it, but I got a dimple there now, so we'll let that cool. Alright, so that's cooled down. I'm going to reach in here, i got these little uh, crocodile pliers, they're pretty cool. So we'll grab this, there we go, alright. So what we're going to do is actually spin this back and make the spring a little tighter. So the spring, we need to turn it this way. So I have that little dimple I just made. We're going to go all the way around one turn.
maybe not. There's not enough room. So this thing is maxed out. I wonder if they don't have too much rope in here. Eh, no, because when it's on the handle, it's sticking out a little bit. Well, that's as far as I want to go. You don't want to pull it and have the spring bottom out all the time. So, we're going to have to leave this the way it is. I might have another one of these covers. Uh, but, I think with the oil, we got it pretty good. So, I'm going to put this back on. Usually you can give those things about a turn. I think what I want to do is just shorten the rope a little bit. That's easy enough to do with this handle. I think that this, this rope's a little wider than what it's supposed to be because it's an aftermarket rope and handle assembly. So we'll take a little bit off and then it may not wrap up as tight. Alright, we'll put that back in the handle and we'll see what it does. I'll give it a pull or two. The spark plug is unplugged. We'll see if it retracts properly. definitely better. The next problem I want to address is this fuel shut off. It's broken and that's pretty common on these Hondas. I've seen that a lot. So there's actually a ledge on the back side and what you can do is you can use mechanics wire to twist that on there. It's really simple and it saves you about eight bucks. So I'm going to go through and uh, do that. So the first step is to drill a little hole here so I can get the mechanics wire right where I want it. Uh, so we will figure out where we want the wire. It's going to be about right here on this corner. Put a dimple there. And then we'll drill it. Wrong speed. This is 18 gauge mechanics wire. So we'll put it through here. We'll grab it with these crocodile pliers. And we'll set this up where we want it. There's pretty much a, a perfect ledge on this thing where our wire can wrap. 
I think I'll spin it around to the back side like this and then we'll twist it down. Once it cinches up, that's pretty much it. And you can see that's on there nice and tight. I'll just get a pair of snips and we'll cut that end off. Looks good, it's nice and neat. This is a little better view. You can see it's nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Quick fix, easy way to do that. So at this point, we're up on the table. We're gonna just pop this carburetor off. I checked the fuel, there's nothing in the tank. But why I have it here, I'm going to sell this thing as a used mower to someone. Probably go for a hundred bucks or so, which is pretty cheap because this, this mower, uh, it's a pretty expensive mower. They're about four or five hundred bucks. So I got the whole carb assembly here and I don't know if I could snake this off. Doing a little bending there. Fuel line stuck. So this carburetor doesn't look like it's ever been cleaned. Just gonna mark where this drain is. Well, she doesn't look that bad in here. Yeah, this thing's so dirty, I want to throw it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Well, you hear the ultrasonic cleaner going in the background. But, anyhow, I'm looking in at this handle. If you remember, there was um, all kinds of electrical tape on here. I found this rod that goes through this back flap. was... Uh, it's broken off, it fell through, so it needs ends on it. So I'm gonna weld some washers onto each end to keep that where it needs to be.
So I welded up that washer on there right here. And that seems good. Now we're going to turn our attention to the tire. I may have this tire. I might have to order it though. I'm not sure. I know I have some Honda tires. Might even have a used one. We'll have to see. I looked, I couldn't find a tire. So I'm gonna have to order that. Pull these blades. Way too tight. These aren't bad. I'm just going to quick hit these. Good enough for me. The deck's pretty dirty along with the rest of the mower. The good news is this is all plastic. So, I've actually never seen one of these plastic decks come in cracked. I guess if you crack a plastic deck, people are gonna throw out their mower and not try and get it fixed. But I never had one that was cracked. I'm sure there's cracked decks out there. Honda kind of gets away. You know, they, they got such a good brand that they can make plastic parts and kind of get away with it just like steel. There's all kinds of different plastics. They have different properties, and if you put your money into your research and development, you can use a plastic that's going to hold up and it's not going to crack. And I think that's what these better companies do. You can see how easily this scrapes off the deck, where metal decks really sticks to them. We'll have to see if they start making uh, commercial lawn mowers instead of fabricated decks. Plastic. If they made a really good plastic deck, that would be good because it wouldn't rust. But would it hold up? And, you know, I imagine if you get a really good plastic, it could hold up forever. And to be honest with you, the manufacturers don't want that either. This looks good. The only thing this thing has is this little sliding thing to mulch. So I want to make sure that that moves. I'm going to blow out that track. Once again, in here it's plastic so it doesn't rust, so it keeps moving very smooth. I'm sure that this mower sat for a while, and you can see this thing moves. There we go. 
binding the way I'm pulling it from behind the mower. So we'll clean that up like that. We'll spray this down a little bit. Spray in there. Why not? And we'll put the blades back on this thing. can always look at the marks to kind of see how it went. Uh, this one goes first, then this one. This gun's pretty cool because you can set the torque. All right, so that should be good for that. Whew, you're sharp. I think the uh, ultrasonic cleaner's done, so we'll put the carb back on this thing. I removed the fuel cap. The uh, shutoff is on. I'm gonna blow out the fuel line, the tank. There's no gas in it but there's a filter in there, so we'll just clean that. That's really dry in the tank. Usually you get some sort of uh, mist coming out of there. So that's actually a good sign. This thing probably would have run all right. Carburetor didn't look that bad. It was dirty on the outside. Let's check that out. Well, I had it in the cleaner for half an hour. And it came out pretty good. So I'm going to remove the emulsion tube and the main jet. That loosened right up. Uh, it could be because it's hot and I had it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Someone was asking what temperature I use in, with my cleaner. I usually set it to about 55 and I think that's it's got to be Celsius if you get it too hot it'll start melting things on the carburetor there we go so we'll clean all the stuff up, throw it back together. I don't see anything that appears to be a problem with this car. We're gonna spray everything out. I got the carb back on. I can't stand these Honda carbs. There's the top cover, a gasket, a plate, another gasket, a rubber spacer, uh, another gasket, the PCV tube, you got to put it all together at once and try and balance it on these two screws. Uh, I ended up having to loosen up this plate. So I got that and we're about ready to try this thing out. I'm going to blow this. New filter. And I'm gonna blow off the whole mower. I don't have my pressure washer hooked up. So I got some fuel, it's kind of old, kind of new mixed, it's about four gallons from a generator that has to be sitting at least 10 years, but my tank has a uh, 
water micron filter. So it pulls out sediment and uh, water. So anyhow, we'll take this thing outside. I got the bag out there. This mower, I don't know, I filmed it, it probably took two hours. So, I don't know, to fix it, this thing would have been about 150, 160 bucks probably. Uh, I have to buy a wheel yet, so that's going to be another 30 bucks. I'm going to have to sell this one for about 160. So we'll see if it works. Hopefully it works. Otherwise, I'm just wasting time and money. guys I had it running pretty good I just wasn't happy with the low speed uh, the idle had a little bit of a surge in it I let it run for about 15 minutes it didn't correct so uh, what I ended up doing was pulling out the low speed jet and I have a bunch of these different little micro drill bit kits and I wound up using in this kit it was number 79 and that bit is uh, 16 thousandths of an inch so I tried the 13 it didn't work I had to pull everything back off the problem is this carburetor is so hard to work on uh, I'm sure you guys have worked on it's just this particular Honda model it has a cover up here where you can't access anything there's a uh, the idle set screw you can't get to unless you pull off the carburetor there's also um, a high speed adjustment that you can only turn it so much I snipped that off and you have to take the carburetor off to adjust that as well um, just a real pain to work on this thing I've worked on them before I haven't found any easy way to really work on them um, I know they Honda makes uh, different style air boxes and they're much easier to work on a lot of them you can make adjustments uh, with the carburetor on the machine but anyhow I got this thing running I'm happy with the way it's running everything's working it doesn't smoke or anything it starts real easy and um, the uh, yeah everything the clutch works this adjustment thing is nice and smooth um, I, as I said, I own this, this mower. Uh, I have another one that I use for cutting my yard and I like it because it mulches so well. There's no clumps or anything, even if the grass is high. So, uh, I'll quick start it so you can see it running, um, at idle. Because that was the only thing that really had an issue. So, we'll do a little choke to see what we get. So you can see everything's working as it should. So anyhow guys, I am Double Wide 6. Thanks for uh, watching the video. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you know any easier tricks or anything for working on this style carburetor. <laughs> Always has been a pain and it's probably a pain for you guys too. So uh, let me know in the comments. I'll link uh, down below some of the tools I used in this repair. So thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. Take care.